Why, hello there. I'm Doseku, and welcome back to Super Mario World Hunter's Revenge Revised. So today we're going to finish out World 4, and to start things off, we're going to see what the fear of heights looks like. Let's go inside and get a little scared. Alright, it looks simple enough, right? Hmm. Eh, at least he's gone. Ha, <laughs> sweet fire flower. Now, it looks like there's a pipe to our left. Let's go and see what's inside it. Huh, interesting. Can we do anything here? kind of strange how this particular cutscene doesn't actually say this guy has died. In fact, as it progresses, we avoid using the word death or indicating that he's died in any fashion. Just usually saying, hey, he retired or he turned in his resignation. It's a little weird, if anything. Especially since this game wasn't afraid to say someone died in the prologue. By the way, is that an echidna in that picture there? Or on that monitor? I mean, I can see where the eyes are, I can see where the dreadlocks is. I think I even saw where the hands kind of were. But, yeah, that definitely looks like an echidna. Must be one of those uh, Knuckles OCs. Hmm. 
accusation to make. I have used ZS and ES before, I've never really had a problem with it. I think I actually like SNES 9X better, but eh. I guess what he's saying is that there are certain ROM hacks that would only operate properly within ZS and ES, which I personally don't know how you would end up with an emulator specific ROM hack that only works on specific ones, but eh, whatever. All we know is that the one that these guys used has caused them a bit of trouble and may have been what caused the mutation in the area that we're currently in. Yeah, we saw that one, was it at the end of the last world as we transitioned to space? I do not know if we could have gone back and tried to find him though. I may have to go back and take a look to see if he resided in a red world or red stage that I haven't found the other exit for yet. That was kind of interesting, and at least we found out who the Moose Man was. Oh, and check this out. We could actually skip cutscenes by pressing start on the gamepad. Like right there. Alright, so I suspect the pipe out of here is somewhere above us, like right there on the steps looking thing, but... I can't seem to get the running jump I need to get that high. I mean, I can almost make it. Oh yeah, and by the way, to repeat the cutscene, all you have to do is press up anywhere in this little area from the uh, little speaker box up to the uh, moose man. I wonder if he was an echidna at one point. No, and I can't actually get a running jump from here. I thought I could run at the wall and get my arms out, then turn around and run at the uh, cliff, but no. Hmm. So, I may have to come back a little later with something that will give me the necessary height. I think that may be the uh, cape power-up. I really can't think of anything else that will get me what I want. Let me check this out. So, I finally figured out how to best these things. Like the- ah. Uh. But... At least now those butterflies are no real threat to us anymore because I know how to expertly dodge them without worrying about having to run away. But death will always remain an ever-present threat, especially from large pits. Alright, so let's see if I can avoid getting hit by that block. Oh, and the butterfly ran away because it saw me with a fire power-up. Nice. Ugh, of course.
<laughs> oh no. Um, there we go. Perfect. Alright, so... It looks like I don't need to jump on those, uh, Paratroopa Arachnids? It's actually kind of weird. Um, the, uh, Moose Guy actually talked about these things a little bit. He mentioned that they were machines. Which is kind of weird because I thought they were just mutated, uh, Paratroopers and such. But I guess it makes sense since that's the kind of thing that, well, Hunter delves into along with his buddy Scorpion. Now, I know they mentioned uh, the little drone that we saw earlier, and I don't think that was an arachnid machine at all, in, in all honesty. Um, it looked like a mini scorpion, which is, well, what scorpion technically is. Or at least what his design seems to be. I still have no idea where those shy guy ghosts come from, though. I wonder, is it worth it to try to get under that ghost to get to the thing on the right? Yeah, it is. Perfect. Now we can eliminate these two. <laughs> Alright. And... Yeah! Oh, gotta be careful there. Another thing I'd like to point out is with these, uh, those little chompers. In the non-mutated world, if you get a look at them, they have some kind of weird- oh. I was going to say that the little chompers have some kind of weird dithering effect on them, where it looks like they're not completely there. While when we view them in the mutation, you get a- their full view, as it were. Let's see if I can't die to this. Done. Perfect. And now we can get our revenge. Now, it looks like there's a pipe down there. Let's see if there's a platform for it. Ready? Oh. What? What the heck? Alright, so that was kind of useless. You know... One thing I will say I don't like about this uh, area very much is the fact that in a lot of the mutation stuff, ground and, well, hazards are hidden by the foreground, which makes things a little difficult to determine whether something is safe or not. It's kind of annoying because that means you're going to die to stuff that you can't actually see. Alright, so this part is not really that hard, but it's kind of, uh, dumb. You got one chance to get at that thing before it flies off screen, and then you have to spawn it back in. The way to make it across all these, though, is just to do a running jump at it, and hold the attack button while you're making your jumps across so you can get more distance. If you're not holding attack while you're making your jumps across, you're not going to get the distance you need to make it past the, uh, third one that's right near the prana plant that we passed. This one looks like it requires us to not completely bork that. So a run jump here would probably have failed. Oh wow. I think I can still do this. Ah, whatever. At least I got the uh, coin I suppose. Alright, let him come down, then masterfully jump. Yeah! Ah, uh, heck. I should have let the roulette wheel finish before I walked through the exit. It's not like I know what I got anyway though, right? So this is it. This seems to be the uh, last spot for this zone. So let's go inside the castle and, uh, well, 
Maybe it'll be cool. I don't know. Let's run in. Alright, so we got our standard castle music. Cool, cool. Is that a... Oh, can't hurt him. So, this stage has a problem. And it's kind of a bad problem in a way. And it has to do with that pillar in the background there. Or at least a couple of them. You can kind of see it right now with that wood spike up there. For some odd reason, certain pillars in the background will actually block certain objects. And I can't really tell why. Because it's only specific pillars that that happens to. And you're going to see a more egregious version of that coming up right here. Yeah. I don't know how or why, but it hides that little buzzsaw. And I can never really figure a way to actually get past it without getting hurt, because you can't see the thing. And it's because of that pillar that's right there. Even though it was behind another wall, the freaking buzzsaw went behind the pillar that was behind a wall. Oh, whatever. There's going to be another instance where that will actually kind of hinder us and stop us from progressing for a little bit. But it won't outright kill us like the, like it did with that bus song. Now this looks interesting. There's something up there. So let's take a trip up and see what's up there. Ah, whatever. I can still do this. Huh. Oh. And well, that seems easy enough. What about here? Now, one of the cool things is that you can indeed kill a thwomp with a shell. Or what I believe is the shell in this game anyway. I don't know why I did that. I think I did that just so I can avoid dying from spikes, but it still didn't help me. Yeah, it was a good shortcut though. We actually made it to the halfway point. Oh, ah. Uh, curses. Alright, I can still grab this. And we can still proceed forward. Alright, so you see that thing right there? I couldn't tell it went down, so I got blocked and then took a hit. And then I foolishly took another hit that led to my death. Well, we got it this time. There we go. Be aware of it, don't let it hide behind the pillar, and then we're set. Smarter than you think, game. I am much smarter than you think. Let's grab this beat and hope I can actually make it out of the level with this. Now, uh, never mind. So, since this is a castle level, I'm really not expecting to see a boss here because we ran through what three different castles and and none of them had a boss. The only ones that had a boss were the, uh, freaking factories we ran into. Oh, I'm sorry, they're called processors. Oh well, we're still good. Never mind, Jesus. Oh! Now I know the trick to this, it's a spin jump. Yeah! Suck it. Oh, cool! It's the freaking green blocks from the palace earlier. Nice. So we can, well, skip a hard section of the level. I like that. Still 
still, these pincer things are annoying, but at least we're out of here. And there's the exit. Nice. save the game for now and then we'll see what awaits us in the next area. Let's a go. Huh. Okay. Well, let's see what the stage is like. Uh oh. Elite and normal. <laughs> the path of woes and trials. Ah. Alright, fine. Join me next time as we enter the path of woes and trials. Hopefully I get a power-up that will let me uh, enter the uh, Super Mario World Central Zone. Eh, oh well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.